All right, all right. Well, I'm sorry to come live so late. Um, uh, Antoine reached out to me, the young man that was involved with the altercation that happened at the church here in Chicago on the southwest side. He wants to let the world know his side of the story. So I have used my platform, allow him to tell his side of the story. And I want to say publicly, um, publicly, that I had it wrong because I was only basing my arguments on the article, you know, was written a written article and the video. So he's going to tell us word for word in his own words. Now, in his own words, what happened, what transpired, what better person can tell us besides him and those that was at the church and the pastor, what happened? So I want to say this before I allow him to come on and things like this. Um, let's be sensitive uh, to what we say. Watch our language and things like that. Y'all notice a platform built on facts, truth, and all that. Not to um, uh, bash people, talk down on people, things like that. I've spread love. Everybody know me. I, I spread love. That's what I'm all about. That's what I'm about, spreading love, spreading love. And that's what we want to do. So let me say this as being a person, as I would say a leader, um, crime chaser, person that's like in a leadership position. We have to be careful uh, what we say and how we say it. And that's why even when I'm on live reporting crime, I try to consider uh, what I say. I try to be as accurate as possible on the information that I'm giving that I'm always giving out. Sometimes I always, sometimes I don't get it right, but most of the time I'm correct. I'm on point. So I appreciate you guys. Those that are prayer warriors, I need you to pray, pray for this young man as he come on and talk with us and tell his story. You know, uh, you know, this video is live, unedited, uncut. It's not scripted. And I ask him, did he want to come on? And tell the world his part, you know, and he, and, and I'm not going to tell his story. I'm going to let him tell his story in his own words. So I appreciate every last one of you. Only thing that I'm asking for you, cooperation, watch what you say, type on the live feed, okay? Please, you know, please be respectful. I mean, if you don't uh, understand something, if you don't uh, know what's going on, Ask questions before you make any derogative uh, comments on this. And as I said, if you have not seen the video, if you have not read the statement, um, read that so you kind of like know what's going on. The young man, he's going to come here and tell his part of the story of what happened and how he felt. Felt like he was valid, but I want to tell this story. I don't want to tell it. And I appreciate you guys. This is live, unedited, uncut. This is not to insult him. If you can't say nothing good about this young man, pray for him. Pray for him. I don't need no negative comments, and I appreciate him coming on my live feed uh, talking to you guys. So we're getting ready to bring him on. Uh, Mr. Haywood, where are you at? Give me a wave or something. Just say I'm, I'm in, I'm here. Let me know because I just wanted to warm the crowd up and let them know what's going on. And you know what, people? No one, None of us is perfect. I always tell people, I'm not perfect, but I have perfect love for my brother and my sister. That what I do have. You here. Okay, I'm going to bring you in. I'm bringing you in. And he's going to tell his story. The way he want to tell, the way he feels. So let him speak, people. Respect him. And respect him and respect him. All right, young man. And you listen. Let me just tell you. How you like, doing? I'm doing wonderful. I want you to tell your story the way you told to me or wherever you feel comfortable. And you got the free range. And never mind the comments if they if they negative. We'll deal with them later. So the flow is short. Absolutely. Okay, go ahead. Absolutely. Go ahead. Okay, so this is what happened on Sunday, you guys. Um, 
the pastor, he told me to leave the church and um, go put on man clothes. No drag queen gonna come in my church um, with a wig on. He, it was, he said something about his spirit. Oh, he was like, okay, let me start from the beginning. Let me start from the beginning, y'all. Because I'm kind of nervous. Okay. 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 He told me to step out in the middle of the aisle, you all. He was like, young man who's standing by this blue pole to stand out in the middle of the aisle. And I stepped out in the middle of the aisle as he asked me to. And as I stepped out in the middle of the aisle, he told me to leave his church. My spirit is my spirit is bothering him. Because no drag queen is going to come up in his church. Um, he was like, if you're going, he was like a man going to dress as a man, a woman going to dress as a woman. And, you know, I left the church and y'all can, as y'all can see in the video, y'all can tell that I already have left the church. You know, and he just continue on to talk. He just continue on to talk and talk and talk as pretty much all of y'all watched the video of what happened. And I left the church or whatever. And just this Monday or Tuesday, he goes on live and says, um, he was just, he was just saying a bunch of lies on his live video saying what he did for me and everything and all of it was as simply a lie he said that he um he said he gave me three hundred dollars that was a lie this man gave me one hundred dollars you all on easter sunday he was prophesying to me after he prophesied to me you all he said, young man, come here. I went up there. He pulled out his wallet. He gave me $100. After that, and then he says, um, he fed me. Now, with that, when he said he fed me, this man never fed me. This day, this day, um, this was a Thursday. On Bible study. I go to his wife. The first lady of the church you all. His. I go to lady. That's her name you all. Lady. I said lady. Perhaps if you can. Give me some food. That's in the back. Because. Um, they sell uh, food. After service. So she was like of course. And I said thank you. And I, you know, I'm going to give you the money back come Sunday. She said, okay, absolutely. I said, okay. She gave me the food, you all. Boom. I said, thank you, lady. Have a blessed um, have a blessed weekend. I see you Sunday. Boom. I gave her the money um, Sunday. That was it. Now, then he also said on his live video, um, he had, um, talk to me in private. He never talked to me in private. His mother had came to me. I was sitting down doing praise and worship. Yep, I was sitting down doing praise and worship, and she came to me. I was sitting down while they, um, the praise team was singing. She walked up to me. As she walked up to me, of course, everybody in the church was staring at me. She said, uh, sir, you got to leave the church because you're not going to dress like a woman up in here. I can't re remember exactly all the things she said because it was a month ago. And, yeah, it was like a couple months ago. And I can't remember. But I know what she said. Um, it's it's kind of sort of what he said this Sunday. And after that, when she said that, you all, I grabbed my book bag and I left. 
And he was just saying a bunch of lies on a live video, you know. But my thing is, if you did do that, man of God, what is your purpose to sit up here and throw it back into my face? You don't sit up here and throw anything back in nobody's face. Whether you a Christian or not, if you a real person, woman or man, you don't sit up here and throw any thing in nobody's face of what you done for them. Whether it's money, food, a talk, you don't sit up here and say, well, this is what I done for that person, me and him, we talked in that. No, you don't sit up here and do that to nobody. Because it wasn't from your heart in the beginning. It was not from your, it was not in his heart in the beginning. You know, so it was not, when he gave me that hundred dollars, you all, it was not from his heart. It was from his flesh. It was from his flesh. He did not give, he did not give me that hundred dollars from his heart. He gave me that money because he was in his flesh, you know, and for him to do that was very disrespectful. And, you know, for all his members, for all his members of that church who vouching for him, it's wrong. Because you don't sit up here and vouch with that man. Because that was very disrespectful. For one, I'm only in high school for you to do that. And then he, say, he says up here, oh, it's church rules. He continue on to talk to me in private um, about me uh, not coming to his church. Key word, you all, his church. Come on, somebody. It's not your church. It's God's church, okay? It's God's church. It's not your church. This is God's church. You know, you know, you don't sit up here and do that. Says, oh, if you're going to come in my church, this is what you got to wear. For one, if a person feel like coming and whatever, you don't tell nobody what they got to wear. If I felt like coming in that church with a dress on, a wig on, whatever, you do not tell me this is what I got to wear. Because at the end of the day, that was discrimination and that was that was very disrespectful of him to say that because for one it was disrespectful because he called me a drag queen you all on this live video i do not identify as drag okay he called me a drag queen i do not identify as drag i identify as a gay homosexual black man for him to do that was wrong. It was so out of pocket in all ways. Like, it was just so disrespectful to sit up here and call me drag. A drag queen. Do it look like I'm a drag queen? Have I ever in your my life since I've been coming to this church came to your church Pastor Rockamore? Antonio Rockamore. Have I ever came to your church with a wig on? Have I ever came in your church with a wig on? No, I have not. I always have got my hair dyed plenty of times. Plenty of times I have got my hair, hair done. And you all, I don't want to leave this out because I want his, I want him to see this live video and I want all them church folks to see this live video. So I won't miss nothing. You know, because I, you know, it's just been a lot going on, y'all. And I don't want to forget anything because they're going to say I'm telling lies. You know, I want to get the real story out since people been saying uh, this is the right story. And since y'all want to vouch for this man, I know I can't change nobody, man, but I'm going to tell y'all the right story. Okay. I want to say this. Now, when I had joined this man church, and I'm saying this on public live, y'all, when I joined this man, I did state it in front of this man, in front of this man and his members, okay, and his wife, 
okay, and his umbrary, okay, whatever the church people call. I said that in front of all of these people, y'all. I said that I want to follow a man. I want to follow a man. I want to be delivered, okay? I did say that. That did come out of my mouth, you all. Okay, that did come out of my mouth. But this the thing. Did I want to be delivered? Did I want to follow a man? No, I want to be who I am. When God created me, he already knew Antoine Haywood was going to be gay. He knew I was going to be gay. When he put me on this earth, he knew what I was going to be. He knew what I was going to be. He knew from the beginning when he created all of us, he knew what you was going to be. He knew what y'all was going to He knew what all of you people on this live video, he knew what you, everybody was going to be. When God created us, he knew what we was going to be. It says in the New Testament, all about love. It says all about love. And for him to call me out and embarrass me like that was all. It was just so disrespectful. And for you all just saying ignorant comments, I'm not looking at them, okay? Okay? I'm not looking at them. And I, I don't care what y'all got to say because I know I got a lot of support on here anyway. And oh, yeah, I don't want to miss this out either. And then he says, um, my family is not, uh, my family is not taking care of me. I'm, I got bad liver arrangements. Um, you know, he was just saying a lot of crap. And you know, my sister, she was just on here, Summer Joy. And I wish she a comment Cause she's on here, I think. She, I just seen her. She was just on here, and that's my blood sister. My granddad, he's right here. I got a brother. Matter of fact, my twin brother. My twin brother. We do not. Let me state that for you all. We do not have bad living arrangements. We have a well, clean house, food put in our house. We eat dinner. Baby, I don't know where you getting that from, but that shouldn't be said. But my thing is, why would you put that on live, though? You just trying to get some clout? You just trying to get some clout from that? Uh oh, you trying to get some clout? That your wife fed me? Not even she fed me. She had just done something for me. And I paid for what she had done for me. So for, for these people to sit up here and vouch for this man in all ways, in all levels of ways, that was so disrespectful of him to sit up there and call me out in front of all them people and say, step out in the middle of the aisle and to leave my church and go put on man clothes? Really? But you know, this this also what I want to state. This is also what I want to say. It would have been blood on this man's hands, you all, if I'd have committed suicide. And I'm saying this on public live. Okay? This man would have blood on his hands. And it would already have been on the news by the end, you know. If I commit suicide, it would have been already on the news. This man would have blood on his hands for what he has done, what he done to me. If I did come to your church, it, you don't know what I came to your church for. How you didn't know I wanted to come to your church this particular Sunday and be delivered? But yet you turned me around and tell me to go home and tell me what I got to put on. You don't sit up here and tell nobody that. God opened his arms up to everybody because God loved everybody. He loved everybody. You know, and for him to do that is so hurtful because that night when I left his church, I was crying. I cried when I walked home. I was pissed off. I was pissed off when I left. 
And my frustration was this so just it was this like, oh my God. When I when I walked out the church I was screaming like, Wow. I was just talking to myself as I was walking down the street like, OMG, I cannot believe this man actually told me this. Like my it was just like, oh my God. This man really told me to get out of his church and go put on man clothes because I'm a member. Because I'm a member. I can't, I got to wear this because this is the protocol. You don't tell nobody what they got to wear. He also said the women of his church, they know that they got to wear uh, they can't wear um, leggings. But who are you at the end of the day to sell somebody what they have to wear? And let me say this. Nobody's sin. Nobody's sin is bigger than nobody. Yeah, okay? Nobody's sin is greater than anybody. Because guess what? If you believe it or not, we all sin every day. And you know, you know, I want to say this. When I was coming out the closet, I used to always say, I don't care. If God don't accept me, I'm just going to die in this sin. I'd rather die in that sin than, you know, just to be uncomfortable living my life for somebody else. But, you know, God, he just will start eventually, like, killing me in those places like, and you steal my child. You steal my son at the end of the day. Because I, 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 I accept you. When I created, when I was creating you, Antoine, and I put you on this earth. I knew who you was gonna be. I knew you. I knew who you was gonna be. You know, when he put me on this earth, he knew what all of us was gonna be. He didn't make us. He didn't make no mistake when he made us, cause he knew what we was gonna be. God didn't make no mistake when he made us. And for him to do that was so wrong, was so wrong, was so wrong. Because I've been going to church since I was a little boy, a little boy. Since my mama had me out of birth, I always loved to go to church. I didn't care if it was a Baptist church. I don't care what the church was. I said, I'm going, I'm going to hear the word. That's it. Y'all, even when I when I was come, even when I was coming out the closet, I said, y'all, I'm still gonna, I'm still gonna go to church. I'm not gonna let this lifestyle take me over and just get all in my head. I'm still gonna go to church. I said I'm always gonna go to church because that's what I believe in. I believe in God. I believe that his son, Jesus Christ, died for my sins. I believe that. So you all, I thank for the people for the support and love. And I had to get on here with this wonderful person, you all. This man right here, he's so wonderful. His nephew reached out to me, you all, and got in contact with me. And I also want to say thank you um, to his nephew, Papa, you all. That your your nephew, he got in contact with me. You know, you want to speak with me, Mr. Martin. Yes, I did. And I thank you so much. Mm, appreciate you. Because I have a lot of support. And I thank you for all the support from my school, outside of my school. I thank you all. And y'all already know how I'm coming. Y'all know I got nothing but love. I'm a funny person. I love everybody. I don't judge nobody. I'm the best person who you could come talk to me with your problems, your issue, whatever, because I love everybody. So I love you all. And that's what I wanted to say. All right, young man. Can I say something to you? Yes, you oh, can, Mr. Okay. Martin. How old are you? I'm 16. 16 years old. Okay. I was thinking you was a grown man. I'll tell you, when according to the article, I was just, that's my thought. Uh, so, let me ask you a question. We spoke earlier before we got on live. How, Absolutely. How do you feel about the church now since this happened? 
Give me your honest opinion. What are your What are your plans of now to do? Well, um, come Sunday, um, I want to do a peace for protest. I want to go there Sunday and have a peaceful protest. I don't want to go there ignorant because when I left at the church, I didn't get ignorant. I didn't throw no chairs. I didn't do that because I'm not an ignorant person. I know I make, I know some of y'all on here know me and I probably joke a lot, you know, but I'm not an ignorant person. I'm not, I'm not an ignorant person. We go on there, me and my community, me and my family, and all my other supporters. We go on that Sunday with a peaceful protest. We not going ignorant. We not going loud. We going for justice. Okay? We not going out of pocket. We not coming out of wrong. And for anybody saying that I'm going there wrong, I'm not. I'm not. I'm doing something peaceful. Okay. Another question. What time is this protest supposed to take place? What time you guys, you got that time together yet? Yes, we do. 7.30. Okay, that, okay 7.30 in the morning or at night? The evening service at the night. The service at night, okay. But you still didn't answer my question. I mean, how you feel about going back to church again? And, you know, that's what I really want to know. I want to get that out of you as well. What you think about the church now? Since this incident happened, are you going to just give up on church and just say, forget it? Throw in the towel. Well, I know, I know, I know you seen me skip your your comment. I know you seen uh -huh. that. Well, um, to be honest with you all, I'm church hurt, okay. and I don't even want to go back to church. But I, that that doesn't mean. Let me clarify that. It doesn't mean I'm going to stop worshiping God, praying to God, because you don't have to go to church. You don't. You can have church wherever. Long as you have God in your heart, that all that's matter. But I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna let God heal me with this pain, with this hurt. Okay. Well, I wanna say to you, young man, uh that uh God love you. I love you. Um I love you with the love of God and I'm praying for you. You know, I'm praying for you. Also, I'm praying for your uh, your oh, your former pastor, which I know you're not consider yourself a member there anymore. And no, sir, and not. I understand the hurt not that you've been through. I also, and I, let me just say this on public, on live. I am a product of the church. I'm not a member of a church right now. I'm not active, but I'll say this: I got my teaching early in my teenage years, and that's why I'm the person I am today. So I know I, we hear a lot of negative things about churches and things like that. But I want to say I thank God for my upbringing in church. It helped me out to be the person who I am today. I'm a loving, I'm a caring person. I love everybody. I try to, you know, try to, you know, bless everybody. I try to love on everybody. Because at the end of the day, I don't have a hell and I don't have a heaven to put nobody. And I sure enough can't judge nobody. Cause I definitely ain't perfect, but I got perfect love for my brother and for my sister. And I want to appreciate you, young man, for coming on here, being open, telling your story, you know? And I was thinking one way, I was like, man, I think it should have been handled another way. It should have been handled another way. And I didn't know you was a young teenager and that was just a total embarrassment. I mean, man, and I, I'm gonna pray for the pastor I'm not going to bash him or say nothing bad about it. It's just, I'm, I'm, I'm hurt for you. I'm hurt for you. And I'm hoping that you will fully recover from this and don't give up on God. Continue to seek him. Seek him while you're young. Young man, I'm telling you. Seek him while you're young. I've been through a lot of things. I'm 50 years old. I've been, I, I told you what I've been through. You know what I'm saying? So I know life is, I still, even right now, I have struggles with them myself, fighting, sin, you know, sin. This is going to be a continual fight. And I have to fight to love everybody, even those that wrong me, do me wrong and say bad things. Just before you came on this live, I had a live, just before the last live I had, some young lady, she got on here and insulted me. 
Yeah, I think she that. Insulted me. I think that. And I gave her an opportunity to come on live and tell your story if you feel like what I am. You know what I'm saying? I don't have nothing to have. My life, how I am on Facebook is how I am in public. Yeah. You know, I appreciate you. Right. And listen, uh, I'm praying for you. Hopefully I can get out there Sunday. Normally Sunday, I will be at work, so I won't be able to join the protest with you guys, but I will be at work. I'm praying for you. I'm glad you got a great family support. People love you. Uh, just keep living your life, and God will deal with you in his own terms and know him for yourself. Know him for yourself. You want to say anything else? Yeah. That's, that's all I have to say. I'm Good done. Time. Okay. I'm done, Mr. Martin. Okay, I appreciate you. All right, I'm going to see if my nephew want to come on here. God bless you for coming on. Thank you. All You're right. welcome. All right, y'all, that's what it is. I let him explain it. It wasn't like an interview or anything like that. I wanted him to be comfortable. I don't want to, you know, make it like I was pounding on him, forcing him to say anything. I appreciate uh, Mr. Haywood came on here, uh, spilled his heart out to us, told us the story i appreciate it and and for a uh, uh, pastor antonio you're welcome to come on his live and you know hey explain yourself as well you know but i thank god that he was able to come on here uh he uh we reached out to him he came on the live i appreciate you guys uh i am right now i am happy uh those some of you have mixed emotions i'm upset the way things was handled you know, the Bible said, all, let all things be done decent and in order. That's a time and place for everything. We do everything. So I understand. I understand. Also, I understand church protocol. Don't get me wrong. I understand. I understand the church have certain rules. You know, I understand that. Don't want to take that from that. I understand when you go, go into different establishments, they have rules. When you go into different homes, there are rules. When you get in people's car, there are rules and things like that. But sometimes it ain't what you say, it's how you say it, you know, and you have to be careful. We are dealing with souls of men, preachers and pastors and ministers and evangelists and Sunday school teachers. So we have to be ever so careful when we talk to souls of men. We're not dealing with chickens and mice and geese and cats. We're dealing with souls of men. You can say one thing and cause a person to go to hell, just like you can say the right thing and cause a person to go to heaven. So God loves us all, in sin, out of sin, doing sin, and not sinning. So I love everybody. Remember, keep God first. Peace out. Live from the crime chaser desk. Thank you, guys. Peace out.